Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Thinker Thema. I'm Amy, I the thinker in our relationship. <laughs> it sounds weird when I say that. It does, but it's also kind of true. Like when it comes to games, I'm very much into mechanics, uh, whereas Maggie is the dreamer, the romantic, the storyteller, the musician, the person who's way more interesting to be around. <laughs> so and this the is themer. Maggie. And the themer, <laughs> the other half of our YouTube channel and my life. Um, so today we are taking a look at a really interesting little game that some of you may know very well and others may have heard of but not really sure what it's about and so today we really wanted to feature it and that is a little card game called Innovation. Now Innovation is by Carl Chudik and Carl Chudik is best known for a game I believe called Glory to Rome which is now long out of print. Uh, he's well known for kind of chaotic multi-use cards and that is exactly what this game is all about. I actually before we get into it into how it plays I just want to talk about why we're reviewing this and what is so brilliant about it. I actually am still on the fence about whether <laughs> like I love playing this game or whether I don't or if it's something in between like mm. it is a real conundrum. It's a puzzling experience. <laughs> it is a, it's, it's not an unpleasant experience. I, I, I would say it's puzzling for me. Yeah. It's puzzling but it's so interesting and mm. if you are someone who's always looking for like a new weird mechanic to kind of get your head around this is such a compelling game because while I'm playing it I'm like I don't know if this is fun <laughs> but as soon as I'm done playing it I want to play it again yeah. and I think that means it will always be in our collection mm. so it's just something that I thought would be great to talk about it's also a game that plays uh, really well at two mm -hmm. um, and so Maggie and I have been playing a lot of it recently um, with lockdown and everything but what is so interesting about this game is that some might say occasionally that in card games there's a broken card or a card that has an overpowered ability mm. that ruins a game experience because when one person gets that card well then you all know you're done for mm. in this game it's just about every card every <laughs> particularly the more you progress the more broken but because there's so many broken cards it's, it's like well, broken that's, that's at all. the game yeah, yeah like the game is like it's just volatile and unpredictable and you just have to think quickly on your feet and you will be blindsided so the theme of it and in innovation is you're going through the ages of human civilization and as you're going through these different ages you are discovering different innovations or technologies or even processes and also depending on what uh, innovations other your opponents have they may actually be able to take advantage of any action that you're taking as well now essentially in this game you are building up a tableau in front of you and the tableau will have five up to five different colored cards or suits that you are playing for their benefits or for their actions and the actions on the cards can either be something that benefits you or something that really damages the other players um, and on your turn you really just have four simple actions to choose from so when it is your turn you get to take two out of a total possible four and you can do the same thing twice I'm going to talk about that in language that makes sense to us rather than the game's language because it takes a little bit to get your head around it but all you're doing is either picking up a card from this center wheel here depending on which era your civilization is up to and they gain and then become more powerful the higher the era or the better the technology mm -hmm. so you can either take one into your hand you can play one from your hand into your tableau if it's of the same color it goes on top of that color so you're replacing that card um, you can also make an achievement so the two win conditions in this game are to get six of the achievements from the center which is basically as soon as you have that amount of points you can take one of these achievements or these special achievements that are based on other conditions in the game um, the other way to win is to race to the end with your civilization and force the end of era 10 which then means the game reverts to whoever has the most points not achievements which makes it very tactical in that mm. 
timing of that switch. Actually, this game that I'm showing you here is the third edition by Asmati Games, but it was actually reprinted by Yellow as well. And they redid the art with um, actual pictures of buildings to make it more thematic. They mm. changed that language that I said was hard to get your head around, but there's something about this original design that I just love. <laughs> it's more abstract, but I just really love it. It's unique mm. and it's uniquely of this time period and of this designer <laughs> and that's what I really like. Also, I should say that the third edition or this version of the game is the only one compatible with the expansions. And I think as we get to know this deck even mm -hmm. better and better, I would want to grab those expansions to add more randomness into it because that is the joy of the game. Yeah, it's really interesting because I love that how minimalistic the game is. It's just cards, but those cards are used in so many different ways. So that's actually really, really clever. There is thematical sense to the types of inventions that you get in a prehistoric uh, era, like you have you know, masonry and oars and uh, riding and you have um, uh, domestication of animals and things like that. There's also some correlation with the the icons or the areas of, st of strength that you get and it does make thematic sense that if someone else is very strong in whatever that area is for example if we went to like factories and you all of a sudden have an innovation that that harnesses factories but they're quite strong that they're going to take advantage of that as well so that's a nice little nod of thematic integration into the crazy volatile and unpredictable mechanics or the way that the, the game actually plays through. In terms of what we love about it or what I enjoy, as I said, it's still a puzzling experience for me because it's like at the end of it, I don't quite know, did I enjoy myself? Like I do find that there's sometimes because the cards can be so crazily overpowered, but there's so many crazily overpowered cards, you find something you're like, oh, I can't wait to play this card. It's like, come, and I get really impatient. I'm like, come on, come on, come on. I want to play this out and see how it how it unfolds. It's so exciting until it I take exciting. that card from your hand. <laughs> yes, which can happen. Like you can end up stealing cards from other people's boards, from other people's hands, even from their score. The thing that makes it really cool is that the actions that you take, if you are going to do something that benefits yourself, you need to have really the majority of the symbols that are shown on the top card of each of your little sets here. So in this case, you can see that I have quite a lot of castles, but so does Maggie. And so if I was to activate something that had a castle attached to an action with a castle attached to it, um, if it was a benefit, every other player gets to do that benefit before you so long as they have an equal or greater number of that symbol mm. in their tableau. If I'm using an attack, um, which is called I demand in this game, which is fun to read out <laughs> because you're saying I demand this of everybody. If they have the same, at least the same number of that symbol on their tableau, then it defends against that attack. Mm which is what makes this game so interesting because you are in control of that game state or your mm. own tableau that if Maggie had a really overpowered attack and kept attacking me and taking, you know, and they are quite destructive, mm -hmm. kept taking my score pile, for example, or kept taking cards out of my hand, the only way for me to defend that is to change the game state, is to collect more of those symbols so that I would have a defense against her strategy. Mm. And that is where, where this game really shines, is mm. just evaluating the game state, um, taking those overpowered cards and combating them with something else overpowered. <laughs> and that is all you're doing in this game. And it's really, really clever. I just actually realized that as a strategy. <laughs> I haven't been playing that as a strategy. Are you serious? Which, yeah, I'm serious. So that's actually pretty handy now for me to know. I was like, oh yeah, that's how I could. Sometimes, like you often win with this game. What? Are you actually serious? I am genuinely serious. The whole like, oh, I could just like make sure that I like, for example, if it's castles. You've beaten me and you didn't even realize this that. This is like a testament to how oh random this can be. Like, and, and, and also like how, how buried like your approach can be. Because there's like, I can think of games where you've just completely destroyed my score, like just stolen score after score. every turn. It's like, I will take more of your points and more of your points. I'm like, no, oh. but obviously I've been able to Pivot, because I think like that particular game that I'm thinking about, I won eventually. Because um, it, because I just went, okay, well I have to pivot because I have zero points, so I'm gonna have to go um, to the yeah. higher technologies and yeah. do that. But yeah, that's very clever. That's so hilarious. Still, so after all these games, I'm still discovering. I just like, can't oh, believe yeah. that. 
I just can't believe that took this review for you to realize that. And also (laughs) that I've just given away my only advantage by doing this review. Let's keep doing reviews. (laughs) That's how I will finally be able to like learn all your thinker secrets and beat you consistently. So this is not a game where you're like, this time I'm going to try this strategy and I'm going to really, you can't plan, you really can't plan ahead. It's very much being on your feet, thinking on your feet and and being able to respond, react and time things well, counterbalance uh, whatever, you know, someone else is doing at the table. So it is, it is fun and exciting and thrilling, but it can also be very quickly devastating. And it, but it's also like the take that element is so (laughs) off the charts that if you don't like that style of game, please stay clear of this card game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) If you don't mind take that, if you enjoy it, then jump right in. Because you can have all the points in the world and someone gets some crazy card that just starts eroding (laughs) that and you're unable to change the way you're doing things, you're in trouble. Yeah. So that's innovation. If you love crazy, random, different games, this one's certainly for you. If you enjoyed this review, please hit subscribe, hit like, let us know if you've played this one in the comments. Love to hear what you guys think. Um, uh, I was saying to Maggie today, just so busy chatting in the comments and it brings (laughs) brings us so much joy to hear your thoughts. So thanks for all of the support. Uh, We'll be back soon with another board game review. Yeah, bye for now. Bye.